Hello everybody, Chaz Large here with another Fix It video for you and uh, on the bench today we have got a Sinclair QL. Oh wow, this is a bit of a golden oldie from the 1980s. Uh, belong to uh, a friend of mine who says, I can't make it work. Um, what do I need to do to make it work? I haven't got an old a TV anymore um, and I haven't got a monitor cable. Can you make it work for me? So I said, well, I'll do my best. Now the thing is with the QL, um, it has got two video outputs. One is a UHF output to go to the good old fashioned TV through the RF socket. And the other one is an RGB output which can go to an RGB uh, TTL monitor. Um, now uh, I have got such a monitor so I can check it on that one. I have got a TV which is capable of still receiving the good old analog UHF TV channels. So. Uh, quick little preface to this I did check it out first off so let me uh, show you on my TV in the background so I'll just connect this up to the TV so I obviously had to do a quick check before I started to make sure it's actually going to do anything and oops I've plugged it in because there's no power switch on this <laughs> um, another one of uh, the old uh, money saving ideas of good old Sir Clive was to don't provide a power switch just pull the plug out not exactly the best idea but anyway there we are so we're plugged in we've got a light come on and um, let me just triple check we are in VTR mode which is there okay turn the sound off and on the TV you can probably just make out if I can clarify that slightly Probably not. Let's take down the exposure. There we go. Exposure down. As you can see there, it says F1 for monitor, F2 for TV. So the actual QL itself is working and it's giving an output from the UHF socket. Now, this is the thing that uh, I checked yesterday is that uh, if I uh, press the F1, which is the key. Uh, that it says on there F1 for monitor, F2 for TV. If I press F2, nothing happens. If I press F1, nothing happens. So my best guess is the keyboards had it. Uh, either the um, membrane has failed or some such um, problem has occurred there. So uh, we'll have a little look inside and see what we can find, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to power it off by pulling the plug and unplug that one as well. Yeah, the UHF out and let's have a little look on the bottom side. I've not taken one of these apart before but there just basically seems to be a lot of Phillips head screws so we'll get them out. I was thinking that uh, just releasing the screws on this front the top would lift off but I think I've probably got to undo the rest of these screws as well not sure uh, what I have to do so I'm just going to undo everything now the longer ones I should keep separate that was the base one these are really tough to undo so I would guess these have never been undone before Oh, that's a very long one in there. Let's just put 3L on there for very long. Yeah, so all these at the back are all very long ones. That's the reset switch, isn't it? So hopefully, yes. Now that's going to come off. And I can see immediately 
there's a loose wire and that's come out of a connector on there so let's very gingerly unplug this ribbon Is that a plug? No, it's not a plug, but I'll just show you where that wire appears to have come from. It appears to have come from there. So can we just push it back in? pushing back in and staying there so obviously we've got to somehow fix it in there actually no, it is definitely coming out I mean, that really does look like a plug I'm loath to try and Put my specs on. Hmm. I'm just going to see if yeah, it is lifting. Slightly, let's get with a puller. too hard I think it, ah actually yeah what it is it's it's a clamp so as yeah so as you as you push it down that clamps it but unfortunately the plastic I gripped it a little bit too tight and that's fractured the plastic so I think I'm gonna have to replace that with some kind of plug let's see what we can do Fortunate that. Little bit of. I think the actual main part of the. Main part of that plug is still working okay right so let me just pause this for a minute and go back and see what the colors are which way they go because I didn't make a note did I right so as it turns out that this particular uh, connection is connection for the three LEDs that we've got on the front here and uh, we've got three colors red white and gray and each has got a, an appropriate black which is the negative i've traced through the three lots of diodes uh, in fact it does actually say d um, d27 d20 and d21 across these pins so um, not uh, a keyboard function but uh, an LED, you know the leds uh, indicators on the top there so um, even though that part of the plastic has has actually fractured um, pulling it up, putting the wires back in, pressing it down really firmly, they're all nice and strong. So the next thing I was just going to check um, is to just check the edge of the ribbon cable here, which um, seems to be okay. I'm just going to give it a, uh, a gentle little rub with my fibre pen because um, age may well have caused these connections to 
um, tarnish. So I'm just giving them a little, a little gentle rub along the edge there. And I'm going to put that back and see if that then allows the keyboard to work. I don't want to rub it too hard, I don't want to rub the actual conductive plastic paint off of there because that's that's what I think this is, is conductive paint on this ribbon. So that one's done. There's a little So one connects one way around, the other one connects the other way around. Right, so let's very, very gently push that back into the edge connector, lining it up properly first. That one's in. And that one's in. Okay, so Let's see if, if that has made any difference to our functionality. Reconnect our RF connector. Power it on. We've got a red light on there. Turn the TV back on because it's gone into standby because it had no signal. Put the volume down to minimum. And we're going to go for F2 for TV. No, so still no, still no response. So either the keyboard membrane has failed or maybe yeah, just try and pressing them all just in case there's any that are stuck. They all feel quite positive. I'm guessing that something has probably gone wrong with this membrane. So we're going to have to have a little look at that. Maybe that we've got a faulty membrane it may be that possibly something has spilt down into the keyboard that something shortened it out any number of things so very gingerly pulling that out once more okay so let's lift that up once again, pull those wires out. At least we know that when we take these wires out, we know where they're going when we put them back. So, okay, taking the membrane off. The membrane actually looks in pretty good condition. Can't see any liquid spillage at all, so I think we're okay in that respect. Keyboard's got a little bit of dustiness on it. Looking at all the buttons. Yeah, there's a little bit of muck on there, only to be expected, but it's dust, it's not gooey or anything like that. Give the rest of it a bit of a dust off, but I think we can safely say that that is okay.
So we can put that to one side as well and just concentrate on the membrane which is where I think the problem actually is. Now just looking at this edge when membranes fold over is typically where the faults occur. See that, that bit there, this side of the membrane has been folded over and has been stuck on this tape. This bit here, the tape, it's, it's not on it permanently and it's got quite a severe cracking. Yeah, in fact actually you can see it now really quite clearly. That, I think, is pretty much guaranteed to be the fault. There is literally, right along there, broken tracks on the membrane. Yeah. Now, the question is, is that repairable or is that a replacement membrane required? And if it is required, in fact, that's got a split on it as well. Yeah. That membrane, I think, is going to have to be replaced. It's getting worse as I move it. I don't like making it any worse than what it is, but it is making it worse. Yeah. I think I'm going to very gingerly try and pull that off of this tape here. to a point where I can possibly open it out. I don't, don't think I'm going to be able to salvage this to be honest. I have got some, yeah, there's, there's goo, sticky goo in there as well. So if I try and peel that, that's all going to come away. I think that membrane has had its day. Yep. Okay, let's see if I can get a replacement membrane for a QL. Back soon. Right, well it appears that there are suppliers of replacement QL membranes, about £20. Um, and I'm going to get uh, in touch with the customer and see if he wants to spend the money on it. Because there may be other faults on there that I can't test until I can get the rest of the computer working. Back with you after that. Right, here I am again. Uh, a few days later, the customer has said yes, and here it is. The uh, new membrane has arrived in a great big envelope, and I've briefly pulled it out just to make sure, but uh, let's take it out again. Whoa, out of there. So this looks like either, I would say, either a brand new membrane that's been made, or it's old stock. Right, here we are. We've now got the old membrane out of uh, the uh, top cabinet. So let's just pick, take it away from the metal uh, shielding. Now this is where I'm going to pull it off this tape, self-adhesive tape that's at the back. So it's damaged anyway, so it won't hurt if I just pull it off. We'll take that out of the way and then we'll just have a little brief double check that it is exactly the right membrane. Right, here we are, uh, having got it all connected up now. Uh, I've got it on the monitor. Let me get the uh, other camera, that one there. Oh, there. And uh, let's just see if it works by pressing the F2 for TV. Now I'm going to put the uh, the customer's um, QL ABC uh, Abacus software uh, drive into this and see if we uh, can get it to start up. 
Okay, so we've got the QL now connected to my cub monitor, my test monitor, and it's all working fine. You may see a black band running through, that's the difference in frame rate between the camera and the monitor. Um, and uh, everything's okay, you can actually see on the cursor, uh, I'm moving the cursor up and down here on the screen, that's fine. Um, hopefully the customer's got a monitor that he can use through RGB on this, and that should be working okay. Um, the only issue with it on my test monitor, as you can see, is the picture is shifted over to the left. To, to adjust that, I would need to get inside and adjust the horizontal phase control. Don't plan to do that. This is just purely a test. So, there we are. We've got this QL up and running. Um, seems to be nothing more than just a replacement keyboard membrane was needed. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.